All right, today we're gonna set up the RPM filter on Betaflight 4.1 with this quad, which has a 32-bit ESC. Before we get into it, I wanted to mention something about notch filters. Notch filters are more effective and efficient at killing out noise. They have less signal delay than a low-pass filter for the amount of attenuation, basically how much they reduce the peak noise. The graph over here you can see at the top, this is signal delay, this is attenuation. Essentially lower numbers are better on the y-axis here. The motion frequency area that we're interested in is zero to about 100 hertz. Maybe you could go to 120 hertz, 150 at the very most. And you can see in here how a notch filter has less signal delay than a low pass, but more attenuation as long as you have it right on top of the peak. In Betaflight 4.0, a lot of emphasis was placed on improvements in the dynamic notch for tracking. But the dynamic notch can only do so much because it's only tracking one peak. Really you have four peaks. Each motor has a peak noise. So the RPM filter was available in Betaflight 4.0, but it involved a little bit. Uh, you had to paste in some DTA and timer changes. Well that's no more in Betaflight 4.1. Now you can just turn it on. What takes the most time in the setup is simply updating your BL Heli firmware on your ESCs. So for this video, we're going to talk about 32-bit ESCs and updating those. If you have 16-bit ESCs, which run on BL Heli S, you can go ahead and check out JESC. I'll make a card to that in the upper right. Actually, that upgrade process is a little easier because of the JESC configurator. So again, notch filters are better than low-pass filters. That doesn't matter if it's a common filter, a predictive filter, a PT1 filter, a bi-quad filter, or whatever other kind of filter name. If it's a low-pass filter, it's not as effective as a notch filter. That's why so much emphasis is placed on notch filtering in Betaflight, getting them to track well, and the RPM filter is the latest advancement in that effort. So if you don't have BL Heli 32 Suite on your computer, just go ahead and Google BL Heli Suite 32. You should see a link here to GitHub. Go ahead and click on that. After the page loads, you can see down here where you can go to either Google Drive or this Media Fire. Going into the Google Drive, you can see the different versions right here. So I'm going to right click on the Windows version and you can hit download here and download that. It will download a zip file to your computer and then you can unzip that, put that in a location, and then just run the exe right from the unzipped folder location. See, I've unzipped that here, and I'm just gonna double click on the exe. That will bring up the configurator. Next thing we wanna do is take the quad and plug it in to USB, and then let that load and connect. I'm gonna go down here, pick the appropriate COM port. So I'm gonna pick COM10, which is my flight control board. I'm gonna hit connect. After the battery's plugged in, gonna go ahead and hit read setup. Now, for some reason here, when I'm hitting connect, uh, right down here, you can see I'm only picking up three ESCs. So after I disconnect here and did a little troubleshooting, it seems like for whatever reason in Betaflight, this was set to, uh, the quad when I received it was set to ProShot. If I come and take this back to DShot 300 and close that out and then minimize this and then reconnect again here, then I get all four ESCs, which is what I want. So again, I'm gonna plug the battery in. And then from here, hit read setup. And then I get all four ESCs showing up here. Right now, it looks like I have BL Heli 32.6. I want to upgrade that to 32.66. It doesn't look like at this point in time, if I hit flash firmware, I'm not really positive that the, the RPM filter supported BL Heli 32 software is in here yet. Uh, I just see 32.6. I need 32.6. 66 as of the date of this video. So we're going to go ahead and close this out and we're going to go the pick a file route. Where I would recommend unplugging your battery, just watch your VTX, it might get pretty hot while you're goofing around with stuff. So we're going to go back to the internet, type in Betaflight RPM filter. You can see the first choice here. From here, we're going to browse down to get the BL Heli firmware 32.66 and that will take us right to this page. What's important for Betaflight 4.0 is now you can just turn on the RPM filter. You don't have to do snippets or any of this stuff. It uses a new protocol called GCR for returning the data packets. It's a little safer. It's an inverted signal, so on and so forth. Anyways, if you're on RPM filter for Betaflight 4, uh, when you upgrade to Betaflight 4.1, you are going to need to get this new updated firmware. If you're trying out RPM filter for the first time with Betaflight 4.1, since it is so much easier, 
to enable and configure with the new configurator, you would just go into here and download it. So we are going to go down to the T motor and diving a little deeper in here to get a little bit more definition. It's the four in one pro V2 multi. So let's come over to here. It looks like that would be the four in one pro V2 multi would be right here. The best way that it looks like to me is to figure out exactly which one you need. Once you're in the BL Heli software, just hit flash BL Heli and then look for the name that comes up right here and then try to match that exactly for what hex file you're going to download. So to download this hex file, we're going to go ahead and click on it here. Then at this screen, right click on where it says raw and hit save link as. So I'm going to reconnect to my flight controller plug in my battery again and hit read setup. Go to flash BL heli, hit ignore the list and pick a file, pick the file, hit yes. Notice this is flashing ESC one. That's going to go ahead and hit and flash up ESC one. Do do do. Watch your VTX could be getting hot. So if it is put a fan on it or blow on it or something. So ESC one has been flashed. I'm going to hit okay. Do you want to write the current setup to ESC1? Yes. Now we're at ESC2. So we're going to ignore the list, pick the firmware again, hit yes for ESC2, and this will flash the firmware to ESC2. You guessed it. Do that two more times and you'll have all four ESCs flashed up. Okay, after they're all flashed, you should see a screen like this. So we just hit OK. And then we can look here. It looks like motor one is reversed and motor four is reversed and I'm clicking on the individual ones just by doing my left click on my mouse button and uh, to see if the settings were written. Uh, everything else looks default uh, 24 kilohertz PWM so we'll take note of that if we ever want to mess with 48 or anything like that and uh, that is it from here you can just go ahead and hit disconnect from your ESCs and they are all flashed up, so unplug your battery. Okay, so that was the hard part. The next part is coming into Betaflight. We're gonna wanna change our gyro and PID loop to 4K 4K. The reason we wanna use 4K 4K is just with the RPM filter and the data going back and forth, 4K loops allow enough time for that data to come back successfully. So you can try 8K 8K, but just on the safe side here, go with 4K 4K. If you look at the release notes for the RPM filter, it recommends that as well, and honestly, 4K 4K is plenty fast for the control frequencies uh, we're trying to, to utilize with the quadcopter. Again, we're going to set to D-Shot 300 because that's aligned with 4K. Uh, 600 would be aligned with 8K. And then we're just going to go ahead and turn on our RPM bidirectional. The other thing we need to make sure we set here is the motor poles. For any larger motors like the 2206 or the 23 whatever for a 5-inch quad and up, it's usually 14 motor poles. For the motor poles, you can count the number of magnets on the bell. For micro motors, it's usually around 12, but do make sure to count them up. This number really matters for the RPM notches to be at the right hertz value based on the motor size. So if you get this wrong, it's not going to filter really well. After we have both of those things set, we're going to go ahead and hit save and reboot. Next, we want to go down to the motors tab and look at making sure the RPM telemetry is coming back. There's two tool tips on here. You can see the R and the, and the E. The R is the current RPM of the motor, which is zero because I don't have the battery plugged in and they're not spinning up. E is the percent error of packet data coming back. So it's 100% because, again, the, the ESCs aren't powered up. So let's go ahead and power them up. What you're going to see here, as soon as I plug this in, those percent errors go to zero. Next thing we're going to do is make sure our props are off. Go ahead and grab the slider and slide this up. And we want to make sure the motor spin up but then this percent packet error does not go above zero, really, in any scenario. With that, it is looking good. Our signal from Betaflight is going to the ESCs, and also the bidirectional telemetry is coming back, as you can see from the packet data. So we're done there. Unplug our battery again. Final step is going into the filter settings. Now that you have bidirectional enabled, this new gyro RPM filter option is displayed. We're gonna go ahead and turn that on. The other thing you can adjust is your harmonics. Uh, the fundamental frequency is where the motor peaks are. Essentially, it's, you know, the motors are, vi are spinning at a certain 
uh, rotation. That can cause, you can convert that to hertz pretty easily with the number of motor poles. And then we put notches right on the appropriate frequencies for the motor RPM. Tracks each motor independently, so as motors are spinning up and down uh, in turns and whatnot, or each notch is tracking that fundamental. That fundamental, if you can think of it, kind of makes an echo. So you can get a first and second harmonic, that first and second echo. It's almost like when you take a rock and you throw it into a lake, you get that initial big ripple, but then the, there's ripples out beyond that that are lower in amplitude, but they're still there. So the first and second harmonic can be hit by another set of notches. It does add up. Most logs I see with, it's really only the fundamental. So I would set this down to one or two. In this build, I've kind of looked at the logging already. I don't see any of that second echo, so I'm going to go ahead and set this to one. If you want the most competitive latency for your setup, you would go with one or two. I'm going to go with one in this case. I'm going to leave the gyro RPM filter minimum at 100. The next adjustment you want to make is some tweaks to your dynamic notch. Now that we have the RPM filter set up, we added in some notch filters. So that adds some delay in our gyro signal, some phase delay, some latency. So we're going to make up for that. We're going to leave the dynamic notch on because that can still hunt around and hit noise peaks that come up from actual vibrations from maybe antenna or frame resonance or things of that nature. But we don't need the dynamic notch to be the main driver anymore. The RPM filters are the main drivers for hitting the motor peak noise. So we're going to go and change some of these settings. We're going to change the dynamic notch range to low. So that's going to bias the dynamic notch to operate in lower frequencies like 100 to 200, 300 hertz. It's going to keep it biased down low. We really want to make sure we clean up that 80 to 250 hertz range of any frame resonances or things of that nature, so that biases it lower. The other thing we're going to do is change it from dual dynamic notches, which basically two of them that shoulder the peak noise uh, in the default setup, we're going to change that to one. So if you set the width here, which is basically the percent which of those two notches were apart, if we set that to zero, that just makes one dynamic notch right on wherever it detects the peak. So we'll set that to zero. The final thing we're going to tweak out there is make the Q factor of the dynamic notch 250. The RPM filters, the default Q factors are 500, so they're pretty narrow, but the targeting is, is pretty precise. The dynamic notch is always a little bit delayed where it's detecting the peak noise and then moving up to it. So its default is 120. We want to have some sort of balance there, so we're going to set that to 250. That will make the dynamic notch narrower and it won't clean up as much noise on the fringes of wherever it detects a peak, but it's not doing the main driver anymore for killing out peak motor noise. So 250 is what we found to be a good setting there. With making these adjustments to the dynamic notch, we have essentially offset any latency add we've increased with adding in any of the RPM notches. And what you'll notice is the RPM does a lot better job at killing out noise because it has that very precise tracking of each motor individually and really sitting exactly on top of where that peak noise is. So we'll hit save from there. At this point, the last thing you would do for filter tuning is you go ahead and fly it with the sliders at default, see how it goes. If uh, you want to get a little bit more aggressive with your filter tune, if the motor temperatures aren't hot or warm or anything, you want to you know, kind of reduce that latency, see if you get better flight performance in prop wash handling, things of that nature. Just go ahead and slide these sliders up one or two notches at a time and then refly it, see if the motor, see how it goes, if it's doing good. Just like Joshua Bardwell will say, if something's going good, do more of it until it starts to go bad. So you can keep sliding these up. What I find with a craft that has a pretty reasonable amount of noise on it, raw noise from the motors and frame resonances and things of that nature, you can usually get these sliders up to about this line, maybe one or two above it. And you know, you're starting to push it at that point. Uh, so, you know, work your way up slowly. Just be careful. You can see caution here. You're starting to get into this zone where you might uh, be too little filtering. It can go the other way where if you have too little filtering and your motors are still cool, that you actually start to see the degradation in performance. What happens is your D-term has so much noise that the noise to signal ratio on your D-term starts to go downhill. 
So even with your motors not being warm, you can see a reduction in performance. You know, you'll have this ultra low latency, but the noise to signal ratio on your D term starts to go south. So you kind of got to play with it. It's quad specific. It's a balance. Hopefully the sliders makes that really easy just to move things up and down and see what works best for you for sharp moves, prop wash handling, things like that. So for this quad, we are going to pick the sliders right here. We should be in good shape. So that is it for setting up the RPM filter on Betaflight 4.1. Hopefully you can see the hardest part is just really getting your BL Heli firmware updated. After that, the stuff in Betaflight is pretty easy. You just check the box on, go down, make sure the telemetry is working right in the motors tab, and then just go set up the filtering as I talked about there. For a more detailed understanding of the RPM filter and how it works and everything, do check out this write-up here by Joe Lucid on the Betaflight Wiki. This talks in great depth about the RPM filter and kind of walks you through what we've already discussed in this video. You don't have snippets anymore. Well, there is a general snippet here. The general snippet essentially just sets up the dynamic notch based on what I just talked about. So that's what's in there but you don't need to deal with uh, DMA or motor timing or anything of that nature anymore, uh, remapping pins and stuff like that. A big thanks to Joe Lucet for all his work in getting the RPM filters uh, coded into Betaflight, coded up for the BL Heli devs, and also into JESC. I ultimately would think that BL Heli will incorporate 32.6.6 into its main uh, release. So if you're watching this video, at a future time, you might be able to just fast forward and click on flash ESC update and just do it right from the, the configurator here and not have to download the hex file separately and all that stuff. Okay, everybody. Thanks, and I hope this helped.